Hello, it's Jeffrey with Real Nifty Vintage, and today I'm doing another shipping room vlog. So here we are in my new eBay room. It's still mostly Etsy room, but I have started to migrate over to eBay as far as all new listings are concerned, but much of what you see in here is still listed on Etsy. I'm, I'm slowly getting around to figuring that one out as far as getting it all moved. And um, so I've, I've had a couple people recently say, so are you not moving to, to eBay? Well, I want to say I am, and I so all new items that I list are on eBay now. Nothing new is going to Etsy, but I do have so many items on Etsy that it doesn't make a lot of sense to move them over to eBay. So I'm working with just a combination of letting things sell down gradually on Etsy and some things I'm pulling and selling them on my Friday night sales. So that seems to be what works right now for me as far as that's concerned. But yes, I'm not putting anything new on Etsy and it all is going on eBay. And there's also a pricing structure difference where on Etsy, I pretty much just put like, um, like what I would really love to get for prices and then they would sit for months and months and months. And the shipping was also included. And then so if, like you are in a different area of the country you might pay a little bit more, but then some other people might pay a little bit less, but it all averaged out for me. So anyways, with this new, with this new way of doing it on, on eBay, it's a lot more fair in, in the way that like you're paying for the shipping that it really is for where you are and you're, everybody has a chance to bid on the item and it's not just up and it sells within like five minutes, which was happening on Etsy quite often. So I really do, I really do like this uh, this way about it. But before I get going with shipping, and I do only have about between six and eight packages today, but so we'll do we'll do those. But I wanted to mention something really extraordinary. I recently had an auction end on eBay. I cannot believe how much it actually sold for. But it was a wall climbing cat. Now, unfortunately, I already boxed it up and shipped it out yesterday. So I can't show you, but I can pop in some po some photos, some photos right here, and show you what it looked like. But it's actually made by Ka uh, is it Carmark or Camark? C A. It might be C A M A R K. Camark. These cats, these wall climbing cats, actually go for quite a bit of money whenever they come up, and I'm not sure why. So the last one before mine sold sold for a hundred and sixty dollars. I did not realize that because, well, since I'm putting things up for auction, it's less, it's less important for me to do any research on like the pricing of things because I'm letting the market tell me what it's worth. But maybe it would have helped if I would have known that it was Camark. I couldn't read that on the bottom of the cap because there was like this embossed logo, but I couldn't, I, I honestly didn't even see it because in certain lighting conditions, you don't even know it's there. So I didn't look it up, but Apparently, wall climbing cat, just that word alone, was enough to uh, alert people, and they and they realized what it was. So it did not end up selling for $160. It sold for about $217. <laughs> so I was shocked. Now that was from an, a recent estate sale, uh, an impromptu estate sale at that. So I was driving to my now closed antique booth and there was this uh, estate sale on the side of the road. So I got some things and that was part of a bulk purchase that I made. And with everything in the, in the, the lot, I think I paid about $42 or something like that. So I'm thinking that that cap cost me in reality about two or three dollars. So it was a fantastic find and I would have never guessed. That's just the power of eBay right there for you. And I'm still, getting I'm still learning about this because you know coming from Etsy you're expected to price everything on what you want to make or what you want to sell it for and you're there's no room for that type of surprise so eBay is really really good for that you you let the market dictate the pricing and then you'll be pleasantly surprised sometimes as what things can go for now the other flip side to that of course is when things go for a little bit less and that's happened a few times for me but I'm certainly okay with it. I've had, you know, like a figurine, figurine sell for like $4 plus shipping. I'm okay with that though. So 
it, certain certain things are just going to be more popular than others. So, um, but with that, I am going to, I, I know I'm a talker today, talk, 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 talker today, but uh, I just thought that was really fun and I wanted to share that story with you. But let's go ahead and start pulling the items that are being shipped out today. I do have another update as far as shipping is concerned because, you know, I'm just, I'm just going to tell you everything, I guess, right now. I'm just, uh. So, um, I'm in the process of training Aaron to do shipping. Now, this is a big, big deal for me. It's very stressful. I decided to record the process, so I'm not sure when that video will be will be out, but I think it's going to be a multi, multi-piece story kind of a video where you'll see his progress and how I'm training him and how it's evolving. I think that will be really interesting for uh, people that are in the reselling business that maybe want to scale up or people that want to start just for themselves and learn how to do shipping. So you'll get to see me basically teaching someone from scratch how to ship. So I think that'll be very, I mean, I think that's very important to know for sure. Shipping online is one of the hardest things in reselling outside of knowing the expertise of what to buy and resell, but you, you do need to know how to ship things safely. And that is very important to me and something that it is stressing me out for, not because I want things to be like perfect and a perfectionist, and I hope that doesn't come come across on the, the video, but I there is a reason I do certain things and there's a reason I want him to do it a certain way. And that's always, it always comes down to, to protect the item in the shipping. And there's so many ways things can go wrong. So look out for that video. I think it'll be fun. But we're going to go ahead and start pulling some items here. Uh, first, we're going to pull a wonderful McCoy vase. Now this one was gifted to me. It was like a friend mail item and it's awesome and it sold for $24 plus shipping. I'm going to go ahead and grab it right now. I'll flip you around. We'll take a look around here. We'll look for it. it should be, yes, it's right there. So Aaron, Aaron does the photography too right now and that's something that he picked up on really well as far as photographing and uh, doing the listings. So we are chugging along and he also likes to keep things organized. So he keeps, he keeps like vases and stuff in like areas. So this is made by McCoy. It's a beautiful piece. And if I, you know, if I wasn't a reseller, I would definitely hang on to this for a while. It's very cool. But I mean, I decided to let it go. So it's one of those things. Reselling is one of those areas that, well, you don't have to, but I have the mentality of I get it in, I get it out, and if I ever really do want something, I can always buy it, like somewhere else. I could pretty much always find something like this online. It might take a few months before the right color or whatever comes up, but it's not like, you know, there's only one and only one. So that's sort of the way I look at it. Yes, it's very cool, very deco looking, and uh, but. I decided to sell it. So 24 plus shipping. And then I'm just going to go ahead and finish pulling items and then we can maybe do a little shipping in this video. So far it's been a lot of talking. <laughs> and then I'm going to pull some uh, block optic depression glass. It sold for $14 for a set of four. Now I remember putting these up and I think I put the opening bid at $14 just because that's the lowest I wanted to go for them. It might have been $12. I cannot remember. But we have a set of four block optic saucers and those are uranium glass they glow under black light so those are the two things then we sold another you know yeah i had a, quite a few auctions in that were from a depression uranium glass uh, purchase that i made so we have a let's see something else something. okay so i also sold this one very nice and the cup and the saucer so out of the original uranium glass stuff that i had listed this is i think the only thing that did not get a bid which i'm not sure why it had no chips or cracks it's a nice little tumbler and i did not have the start very high so that one that one didn't sell. this is more recent that was from the last like day or two so these things Pretty much everything I bought and listed sold. And then the other two things on eBay that sold was a Starbucks Guatemala mug and a 
Lotus Jadeite Plate. So the Lotus Jadeite Plate is right over here, and I happened to find the matching bowl very recently, so that'll be that'll have to go separate. I mean, I'll have to list it separately. And then the other thing is that Guatemala mug. It's right up here. This was something I almost didn't purchase because it's not old. It's not very interesting to me. But Starbucks stuff is pretty collectible. So I bought it for, I think, a dollar. It was, it was either 50 cents or a dollar, and it sold for $12.50 plus shipping. So that is all of the eBay sales that are going out that are currently paid. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get going on those. Alright, so I went ahead and wrapped up everything all at once. Sometimes I decide to do it that way rather than do, you know, each and everything separately. So they're all wrapped up and I'm ready for my next step, which is just going to be to box them up. So I will go ahead and do that. I'm about to do this plate right here and I'm gonna put it in this 12 by 12 by 8 box but the great thing about shipping in these boxes you can cut them down so you don't have to have up to here you don't have to have an 8 inch tall box I'm gonna actually cut it down so I'll show you that trick now they do sell like a little tool that you can use for this but I don't I just I it's not hard to do it this way that I'm gonna show you. All right, so I'm gonna take the ruler and I'm going to first decide how tall I really want this box to be. It's a very small plate, so, I mean, it's pretty shallow. So as you can see there, it's not gonna take much. I am gonna go ahead and drop the ruler in to see what we have to work with. Looks like I'm gonna cut down five inches. So what I do is I measure from the top here, I line it with the number five, and I'm gonna cut it down. Uh, so I'll have the ruler. That'll be my my guide. And then with the other hand, I'll use the, the blade. So I'm just going to line that number five up with the top line there and cut straight up. So that's all I do. I'll go around the box doing it that way. Just like that. You just do it four times right on the corners and then to actually fold it over you can use the same ruler and 
And on a 12 by 12 by 8 box like this, it fits nicely right in there. You align the two corners just like that. It kind of just stays by itself. But And then from the other side, take your hand and put it just above the ruler. And you're going to push in. You're going to with your right hand, you're going to push that way, and with your other hand, you're going to push that way, like that. And that ruler creates a straight edge. So that one's done, and you just work your way around the box. And we're, we're all we're doing is making new fold lines, and it works that simply. Now, in a larger box, it's a, not as easy, I guess. But what you do is you would work on one point come over to the other point and then the kind of the lines sort of meet in the middle so you obviously the rulers only this big so larger boxes and smaller boxes are actually easy to do without a ruler so that's even that's not really a problem either so we'll just put the paper on the bottom put the paper around the plate and close it up so let's do that now wrapping the paper around the plate you see like that it gives it something extra I, I hardly need that because we're gonna put a lot of downward pressure on this and it's gonna make it where that plate does not move so yeah I just put a little bit of paper on top and then we'll fold those flaps in my card in and this will be one secure package or up it the other way so luckily on one like this the flaps they actually go in without needing to trim them but if you need to trim them a great place to trim it is right here along the natural fold line that's already there but like I said this is just ready to go as is so that is our now complete new folded box and I'll just grab the tape gun and we'll tape that. You'll wanna probably, since this flap is so big, you'll probably wanna tape it twice, one sort of here and then one right towards the end so that this can't come up. So we'll do that now. I mean, you could tape it once just like right here, but then you have a lot of open area that is not necessarily good. I'm also overlapping that flap just a little bit so that tape closes that seal. You can see what I mean? Just an added, added little thing there. All right, so I got everything pretty much all packed up except for one Etsy order that I noticed that had come through. So it's a pillow. It's actually a stitched pillow. So I've had this for a little bit and I'm so happy that it's sold, but it's in this, I'll flip you around. So it's in one of these. I don't see it off the bat. I'd love it if it was this top one. And I don't think it is. Oh, it's a leaning tower of fabric. So it's a pillow. Where's that pillow at? Naturally. There it is on the bottom. <laughs> Okay, so that's a really cute pillow. I will go ahead and put that in a 12 by 12 by 8 box, and it'll, I'll probably end up cutting it down because it's not that thick. Well, with that, I'm going to round out this video. I have my items right here that I will be taking to the post office. And that is all for today. So thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye-bye.